Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey, uh, uh, brother Khalif, man, you know, uh, before you, you told me a lot of things, man, uh, you always did for me when I called on you about some history or about something that I'm doing. But uh, I took time out to do like, uh, let's say a special one-on-one -on -one with you because I think that, uh, I think I know your case. I know your history. Right. And I think as a, I guess I'm a journalist, right? Let's go ahead and say, I'm gonna accept that. I'm a journalist. And as a journalist, I got an obligation to tell a story a certain way. And I've been seeing you telling your story. I mean, and me and you can put it out there that we've been working on different things for your story and all that. But uh, to get straight to the point, uh, you was talking to me about a couple of things that didn't go in the videos. And I'm gonna get to the main thing in the end. In the beginning, I just kind of want you to break down something because I seen something last night on YouTube. I don't even remember the person's name. I sent it to you on your phone as a white man. I don't even know. I didn't research him yet. You know what I do. I'm going to do my homework on him. But he is pushing a book by John Greshner and some phone calls from John Greshner and John Greshner is calling him. For those of you all that don't know who John Greshner is, John Greshner is a former leader of the Aryan Brotherhood who became a rat later. And uh, in the beginning of times, my big homies like, Fly right here, Coleman Bay and Butch Wood, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? They tell a story of when the DC blacks were not beefing or were not at war with the AB. So aside from some of the things that I want to get from Fly, because Fly is a treasure troll of historic information, bro. Like, I don't know what type of resource this is for me. When I sit around and I talk, it comes from talking to people like this. But he broke down some early today that I want to go into. I want to skip past all this DC black. A, B, B fit. And I want to go to the beginning and I want to take some of this from Fly. So Fly, before I go into everything else, we don't need to introduce you, bro. I think people already know who you are now. And if they don't, I can spend the time introducing you later. Right now, can you take me to McNeil Island and how you first encountered Barry Mills and how, let me say, say how and why you encountered him? I think that's a better question. Well, when Barry Mills first came to the federal system from San Quentin, they sent him to uh, McNeil Island because McNeil Island is in Stella Cone, Washington, near Tacoma, Washington. And it's on a real island. The only way you can get there is you got to go on a tugboat. And um, back then, we only had seven USPs in the federal system. We just... Atlanta, Leavenworth, Terry Hutt, Murray, Lewisburg, Lompoc. And I caught a case in Lewisburg. And at the time, you had to be 26 or 27 to be in the USP, unless you was overly aggressive and they'll waive your age. But they used to send the young guys to Magna Island. So I caught a case in Lewisburg to send me to Magna Island. And they put me in the hole because some of the homies out there was rats. And uh, <clears throat> when they heard I was there, they went and told the administration, man, you can't let this guy out because he know he know that we rats. You know, the guy that told on Willie Strickland, Jesse Martin, a lot of dudes were told on high profile homies was there. So they kept me in the hole for four months. But see, back then in the 70s, this was in 77. But see, back then in the 70s, you know, we had Walter Fontroy used to advocate for D.C. prisons and uh, Marin Bird. So, you know, my mother and them went down. I said, man, y'all sent him way to McNeil Island from Lewisburg where he was hours away from home. They won't let him out the hole. Yeah, it's in, it's in Stella Cone, Washington. It's in Washington State. Okay. You know what I mean? So I leave Lewisburg, which was a few hours drive from D.C., to the West Coast. And I'm in the middle of the water. Dang. So Wilhelmina Rolock, who was city council for Ward 8, in the school with my mother, she said, if y'all not going to let them out, send them back on the East Coast. So after four months in the hole, they let me out. The Red Walter Harris, who testified against me on my Logan Kingpin case, was out there. Our homie, 
Offer House, Big Junie, and some more homies. So, what year is this, Flat? 1977. Okay, okay, my bad. So, <clears throat> that's the year I was born, big homie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you was in McNeil Island when I was born, goodness. <laughs> yeah, and I go there from Lewisburg, so what happened, normally when the homie go to another joint, all the homies wait for you, greet you, what you need, got bags for you, food, commissary, radio, dope, weed, whatever you need. So when they let me out there for four months, the whole joint had heard about this dude out of D.C. in the hole that they won't let out. And you the only homie there at the time? Where? In the whole Island. You the only homie? No, nah, the homies was on on population. Oh, okay. but I, I was the only homie in the whole. Okay. Because I told you Jesse Martin, who told on Willie Strickland and them was on population, and they was campaigning for not letting me out. But Arthur House and the rat Walter Harris who told on me on the loading case, who uh, uh and some more homies was out there that I knew from Juvenile Jones and you Center. I said, y'all ain't going to get me high? They said, man, we ain't got nothing. See, y'all ain't got no weed or nothing? They said, man, all the Mexican mafias got all the dope in the weed. I said, what is Mexican mafia? A lot of you, I ain't even know what the Mexican mafia was. I just leave Louisville. Young, there. dumb Lawton dude, huh, man? On Lawton time, I come out, you know what I mean? I just got 75 life, so I'm going crazy. So Cadillac had a partner there named Big Black, Steve Wooten, out of Bronx, New York. One of Cadillac's oh, yeah. New York dude, huh? He came from Mern to there. So Cadillac sent him a message. He come get me, took him around and said, he said, the joint is sweet. He said, man, this is sweet joint coming from Mern to here. You know what I mean? I said, I need a knife. He said, what you need a knife for? I said, man, because if the joint sweet like that, and they say the Mexican mafia got all the weed and the dope and stuff, I need to go get some. I never heard of a Mexican mafia, Eon. So I, 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 I give me a little posse. Got a dude out of St. Louis. Uh, a dude I always out hear the St. Louis dude's name back then when y'all talk, bro. Because they used to roll with us. They were strong. Kansas City and St. Louis was strong back in the day. So, and they used to roll with us in Turn Hut. Because the Grand Sheik, God of Rush Bay, was cool with all the homies. He was the Grand Sheik in Turn Hut. So, anyway, after a few days, I got my positive. I said, man, look, where I come from. So, you got to understand this too, Eon. This is a culture shock. Because I come from the East Coast on the West Coast. Okay. So, I don't know. Their culture. I don't know their history. I don't know nothing about no Aaron brother who was a Mexican mafia. I just left Lord, uh, Lord in uh, uh, Lewisburg. Right. So when we go to the movies and all the other joints, DC got front row seats. They got their own section. <laughs> I see the Mexican mafia and white boys sitting in the front. I told the homies, I said, "Why y'all sitting back here?" I said, "Man, we're gonna have to change something, man." So I said, man, we gonna hit the we gonna hit the Mexican mafia tonight. So I we going to sell. I pull out two knives. I said, everybody strip. Then in that party, they got dope, weed, wine, everything. Cause it's joint what ten man sales. It's ten oh, man. They got tanks. They got tanks. Yeah. Ten man sales. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. No, nah, these was ten man sales and eight man sales. Right. So uh, I made everybody strip on these on these. Lift your butt, spread your nuts, bend over. So Call the squat. <laughs> yeah. So we took all the weed and all the dope, wine, money. So we went and had a party. We partied all night. They said, oh, they said man, stuff going to change. Man, fly out here. The next day, I'm around the gym, beating the bag, working out with me off the house and some homies. And they celebrating because they got high all night. Eddie Burke, who's Rick Rock cousin, come around the gym and say, Fly, don't come out the gym, man. 
they got about 20, 25 messes looking for you. They said they could kill the dude fly. I said, where they at? He said, they walking around the cell block. I said, let's go meet them. We go around there. And uh, the leader of the Mexican mafia was a dude named Gabby, a Mexican named Gabby, big, big okay. Gabby. Okay. His right hand man was Ryan Pacino, who's in ADX right now, and and was at war with the uh, DC. He he had a little juice. He was like one of Gabby's henchmen. <clears throat> and I see a white dude with them. I later found out it was Barry Mills. So I said, y'all looking for fly? They said, yeah, y'all know where he at? And I drew my jump. I said, I'm fly. Riley Messino came at me. And the homies pulled the jump, so we night fighting. Somebody go get Cadillac's partner, Big Black from New York. He come around that jump with two jumps. And man, we backed up everything up in there. They locked the prison down. Because it's a rat jump with homies. You know, they got dudes hiding out out there in McMahon Island. So you got a mixture of convicts, you got a mixture of killers, but you got, like I told you, Jesse Martin was with a stricken co-defendant, was one, he was run with Lackdown Law, an old killer. But when he turned bad, he couldn't, he couldn't go to a regular joint like Lionel or Leavenworth, so they got him out there hiding. So they go tell the administration D.C. at war with the Mexican mafia. They locked all us up. So they brought two buses in, sent me to Lompa, sent Barry Mill and the Mexicans to Lambworth and other jumps. When I get to uh, Lompa, our home is hot dog. My partner, Lonnie Coat, all them there. They said, man, what's up? I said, man, we just had a beef with the dudes. And uh, they said, man, a lot of the ABs and Mexican Mafia is here. I don't know nothing about no Aaron Brothers or Mexican Mafia. So the administration at Lion Park say he can't come out here. They keep me in a hole. So by Lion Park being the, the main station, for the white boys in the Mexican mafia, because that's their home base. There's a white boy in the hole named David Owens, who's an AB. So, so Barry Mills and them send word to them, say, is a dude there out of D.C. named Fly. If he there, he got to get hit, because he the one started the war. Now, they sent Big Black out of New York with me. When they shipped all us out, they say Big Black and this dude keep gaffing the bay. They the main ones got to go. So that's not even just straight D.C. That's D.C. and New York. So that's Black. Yeah, that's right. Because Big Black is Black's partner. And remember, we got a kinship because when he heard we was running that night fight, he come around that corner like Clint Eastwood with two jumps. You know what I mean? He big like Black, big, strong dude. So... We in the hole in Lion Park. We made a bond. We brothers. I'm his little brother. He said, where we go, you got to stay in touch. Another brother named James Franklin out of Chicago was a millionaire. He said, man, I'm going to take care of you as long as you in. I love you. He met me there, too. So they redesignated me, sent me to, Lyme, to uh, Atlanta in 78. Send Big Black to Lewisburg. So he's telling all the homies what happened. When I get to Atlanta, all the homies are already waiting on me. Barry Mills is there. So I said, that looked like the white dude that was with them dudes, man, when we pulled the knives out. But the dude is smart. The dude is an old killer, and he does his homework. He said, man, I'd like to have a meeting with you in the kitchen. He wanted to make sure we're in the kitchen where all the homies and everybody at. He want them to see us talking. He ain't got but like four or five dudes with him at the time. He said, man, I'm an earned brotherhood. But I come up and Falsam and Quentin with Gabby and them. So I had to roll with them. 
but that's their beef. He said, man, if I can, I'd like to call the truce with me and you. He said, man, and heard a lot about you. I respect you. Because we 500 deep in the line. They ain't had no, they ain't had nothing coming. Old man Deloach is like the godfather of DC. All he gotta do is get a word, everybody can fall right in line. Yeah, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> when they hear I'm here, they say, man, that's so and so's grandson. That's Rabbit Brown's little cousin. That's even made son. So all the homies agree me. So at, it, me and Barry Mill, we call the truth. Okay. So we make a deal. <clears throat> He said, if a white dude disrespects somebody out of D.C., and if it's a serious beef, come to me, I'm a handler. He said, if a black dude do that, man, can you take it? Because we don't want no war, man. Because they, they're too outnumbered. We so strong. I mean, that would have been like taking candy from a baby. You know what I mean? And he's seen that because he's sharp now. Every day he's recruiting white dudes. You know, I'm from all over, but they're extorting them. You know what I mean? So he's got a lot of power. He used to see me and Alan on the yard every day with Terry Trice and then Will Fields and home working out. You know what I mean? He said, man, I did not know you were sharp like that. I'm 25, 25 years old. You got to picture me beating the bag with no gloves on that lamp. So he started mind me, so we started trading dope. Because he extorting white dudes for packages. You know what I mean? So every day he walk up and down the hall with his kitchen whites on with blood. I say, why you be doing that? He said, because I work in the butcher shop. And if the police see me every day with my whites on with blood, when something happened, they already used to seeing me with bloody uniform. I said, man, I never, he say, this is an old San Quentin trick. He's taught me how to play handball. He get a letter in the mail from Tommy Silverstein and them. They say, a dude is coming there that's telling on Tommy on 11 worth of murder. I work in a rec, in a rec center. But he got so much respect for me, he said, man, make sure you and none of your homies is not in the rec center at one o'clock because we're going to butcher this dude. Every day, a certain time, the homies take over the basketball court, Willie Strick, the Cal Smith, all the old, the youngs against the old. You know what I mean? So I tell all the homies, I say, don't nobody go on the rec shack. They, cut, they butchered the dude up, almost cut his head off, left him in the trash can. So all the homies say, man, this dude got a lot of respect for you, man, to come to you and ask you because you make sure none of us in there. I see him later on, I do this. You know what I mean? I salute him. So he get away. At the time, it's killers every week in Atlanta. They taking contracts. Atlanta was so big, they even got a train track. A train come through there. But it's so big, I never seen so much money and so much dope in my life till I got in Atlanta. All Nick Bonds lieutenants and that Steve Bishop. With we're talking. So I uh I started respecting this dude, Barry. He's teaching me a lot of stuff also now. I'm gonna give him his props. You know what I mean? About the game. And uh and the homies. Had respected the fact that Fly got him. Fly got him on. He, he reported to Fly. You know what I mean? And, 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 and truth be told, if, if a black dude disrespects him, I say, don't cause no war, man, because it's going to be a bloodshed. You know what I mean? So once all the homies seen how this dude was making a power play, because he's making a power play in that jump. And I didn't realize how shrewd this dude was, Eon. You know, I'm talking about all the white dudes from other states that was getting money, they started reporting to him and he was extorting. The dude named Harold Stanfield was selling some blow. 
Because when the China White come in, everybody won. And uh, at the time, Bird flipping for me. He stole Bird's stash. Bird came to me and said, tonight, he going to wait me. Harold Stanfield called his mother and said, if the chaplain called, that mean I'm dead. Bird called him in the shower and bushed him up that night. Kill him in the shower. He over in the cell block with Strickland and Brothers and uh, Terry Trice and Cooley. Cooley and Brothers say, he just butchered that chump, man. They left him in the shower. So, like I told you, every week is killings. There's so many killings, they start talking about it at the Senate. They said, we're going to have to close this prison down. There's too many murders, man. So, uh, he catches murder, go to Murray, meet Coolio Brothers, turn tries to get locked up for a joint, send me to Leavenworth, send Coolio to Long Park, send Bros to Lewisburg. I get to Leavenworth, Earl Coleman Bay, white man, all of them waiting on me, Sonny Bell, yeah. Same white man that you said was a bad man with his hands? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I mean, was one of the best fights out of D.C. So they waiting on me. Rough House. Then Rough House Cadillac's part. You know what I mean? Charles McGill, big Rough House. Rough House Cadillac. I'm not Cadillac, wasn't it? Earl Coleman Bay, Rough House, Fat Man, Sonny Belly Ill, all the homes. So they put me in the hole, but then the hole is right, it's behind the uh, big yard. So when I come off of wrecking the hole, they come around the yard and holler at me, what you need, man? Cone bed and them, first floor of the hill. Cause you know I'm gabbing the bed at the time I'm mo. <clears throat> so Rough House, my man, man, I love house. I said, y'all think they gonna let me out? I said, yeah. I come out a week later. So Earl Coleman Bay, this is what you can do, man. You come in the temple. I said, man, I just got here. Let me get my feet wet, man. Let me see what's going on. You know what I mean? So a dude out of Kansas City named Twin, who's one of the killers out of Kansas City, was in McNair Island with me in the hole. He sent word to Leavenworth to their godfather, a dude named Gene Richardson. He said, man, there's a young dude coming there out of D.C. named Fly. Give him anything he want, man. But Gene is already cool with Earl and them. He in the block with them. So at the time, the ABs were strong in Leavenworth. Because Tommy Silverstein caught his beef there. See my point? So the leader at the time in Leavenworth was a white dude named Preacher, AB. So Bird was so shrewd, they networking. And they contacting each other because they got different codes, different ways they communicate, right? So preacher. Yeah, so you was at Leavenworth, I believe he was talking I, about. I left Atlanta, went to Leavenworth. We caught a joint in, in Atlanta and they, and they split me bros, cool ear ups and cool ear long park bros to uh, Lewisburg, sent me to Leavenworth. So the homies waiting on me. See, back then wasn't no airlifts. Everybody... Everybody travel by bus. You stop at every joint. That's how we send word to every joint. Because I told you one but seven penitentiary. Wasn't no Allen Wood, Coleman, all the one, none of them joints in existence. Murn was the last stop. You know what I mean? So we so deep in every spot. And you got heavy hitters in every joint. Like I just left Lana with Vernon and uh the Lopes, Stampede and you got uh 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 lacking them in Murn. You got Earl Cone Bay and then in Leavenworth. You know what I mean? So every time a bus stop, it, and Dog McKinney in Murn. You know what I mean? So uh Burn has sent word to Preacher, who was the leader of the ABs in Leavenworth. So they know who I am. But what I didn't know. 
that the Mexican mafia they had a contract out on me. It from Atlanta or from McNeil Island? From McNeil Island. Wasn't no Mexican mafia in Atlanta. But I didn't know that Gabby and them had said the dude out of fly, whoever come across him, he got to die. You see my point? So, and you got to remember, I'm 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 young. I'm in my twenties. I just got that seventy five life, and I'm on kill mode. You know what I mean? I'm on take mode and kill mode because I don't see nothing to hear nothing. Because you know what I mean? When you doing seventy five life, and you and them USPs back in them days, wasn't no fighting. You killing. So, I told you, you got white man Earl Conway, Rough House. Uh, Sonny Bailey here. Now they got Big Lulu in the hole in Larimworth. They won't let him out because they're so scared of him. The administration said he can't come out there. So while I'm in Larimworth, I'm meeting, you know, a lot of big boys. And But at the time, Fred and them is in the street. They come out a lot. Fred, Ed, and all them come over around that time in 79. You know what I mean? And they getting money. You know what I mean? My crew out in Southeast, Black Wells, my rock, my brother and them. They, so we getting the China white. You know what I mean? So them white boys from California love that dope. So I don't care how racist you are. When you on dope, if the blacks got you got you got to deal with them blacks, man. You know what I mean? So if it ain't nothing but all the business relationship. But at the time, uh, you know, we hold the fort down, DC strong air where you go. Tommy Silverstein was in Murray for killing somebody in Lamworth. So Burr came to Lamworth to be a witness. So, but he, he all is in the hole together. So when he see me. That's the first time we seen this ever since Atlanta. So he tell all his people, hey man, this dude here, whatever he say, go. You know what I mean? So I catch a case and let him work and go to Mern. So when I go to Mern, Tommy Silverstein called me Lulu the court for him because at the time ain't no war. They get along. The ABs, you know, I mean they respect the homies and you know what I mean? And, and burn them, tell us, hey man, big Lulu and fly. But the move was for us to escape. They called some people back from San Quentin. They got hacksaw blades in their butt. So they cut a knife out of the steel bed. Well, they put us in the candy chair in Wichita, Kansas. Me and Lulu got our spot in the ABs and Tommy. But every day we talking, hanging out. So the move was, if they take us to court, we're going to try to. So you saying that the homies was actually cool and cordial with the AB? At this time. At this time. Every, I told you, Barry called the truth when we was in the lab. So he's letting all of them know, hey, man. Them dudes respect us, man. I mean, we was in Atlanta. We had no problem. We dealt with each other. We traded dope. Same thing in Larry. We're preaching them. Just come to Earl. Earl Coleman Bay and them. Because preaching the block with Earl. Ralph Walker, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, me, white man, all this on the other side. But at the time, ain't no war. Ain't no beef. You see what I'm saying? So, one day, uh, me and Lulu talking, and, and Tommy said, man, they keep on talking how sharp you is. You know, I fought, man, the San Quentin. I was a middleweight champion, man. Tommy, said, who? Tommy Silverstein? Yeah. Yeah, he came to me and Lulu. So he called me out. So I looked at Lulu. He said, punch him. Lulu said, punch him. Yeah. I ate his ass up. Ah, uh, this, this ain't, this, this is in the county jail in Wichita. Oh, I, I don't know that. Tell me, bro. Okay. Yeah, me and Lulu. We got our cell block, and, and the ABs got their cell block. So we sitting in there one day watching TV. I don't know if they were drinking what, but he come in there and said, man, uh, 
you know, I was the middleweight champion saying, Quentin, man, everybody burning him, telling him how sharp you is. I want to do something with you. you know, so he Lulu, wasn't scared. No, I wasn't scared. Lulu said, come on. Lulu said, go ahead. Because Lulu got the big knife or something go wrong anyway. So I said, you want to go in the day room? We go in the day room. He told you little stuff. He might can fight for a white boy, but I ain't, you know. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm 26 at the time. I mean, I'm in 20 round shape. You know what I mean? I ate his ass up. The man a bare knuckle? Yeah. Yeah, we got bare knuckles. And uh Lulu right there, his people right there. And uh, I ate his ass up, chopped him in half, not beat him all around the room. He stopped. He said, Man, I ain't know you was that sharp. You got it. He said, But I want a rematch. I said, You can get one. You can get one. You know what I mean? But now, to remember, the move was we posed escape. We got street knives. Only two monsters taking us back to fourth the court, and um, it didn't it didn't jump off because they split us up. 